All right, today we're gonna to be taking a look at a cannon. It's kind of a little bitty cannon too. All right, here it is. This is the M1857, or the Napoleon cannon, designated M1857 because that's the year that the US Army adopted it. It was uh, a 12 pound smooth bore, so it fired a 12 pound projectile and it could shoot it up to 1,600 yards, which is a pretty good distance for a uh, big old heavy 12 pound ball, but it had plenty of powder behind it to do it. Uh, there were about 1,157 of these made for the U.S. Army for the, the Union side. The Confederate side did capture some of these during the war, and they were able to produce about 500 for their own use. We're going to take this thing up to the rifle range. We're going to set it up at the 50-yard line and shoot at the 100-yard target. So we're going to be shooting 50 yards and see if we can hit anything with this. I'm going to shoot at the 100 yard target but I'm set up at the 50 yard line on here so what I'm going to do is after that firing that I just did there I'm going to give it a kind of a brief brushing now this is 69 caliber and I am using my standard black powder range rod because uh, the ones that come on here the brushes that are on there are not good for uh, use with this cannon they are decorative brushes only and there is no ramrod that comes with this cannon either so I'm using a 58 caliber uh, ramrod to put these in there now i got my limber over here this is the closest thing i got to a limber anyways and i'm going to be shooting uh this is graf and sons black powder this is fg or 1f it is the coarsest cannon or the coarsest black powder you can get and this is for cannon use you can use 2fg in this thing too uh traditions does recommend it but uh the problem with 2fg is it starts burning a little hotter and a little faster so really you should stick to, um, if you can get the 1FG, that would be the best thing to do. I got my powder measure out here and we're gonna put 45 grains of the uh, 1F or FG in there. And one of the things about this powder, I've just got a uh, standard flask here and uh, the powder is really coarse. So it doesn't, um, it doesn't flow through the little valve there really well anyways, but uh, it will get in there it just takes a little bit more time to load this thing just pick it up now this isn't the way they would have done it during the Civil War but that's the way we can do this one we're just gonna pick it up put my powder measure back in the limber and it takes a 0.15 inch patch on it 0 0.015 it is I think and we've got a round ball here this is a smooth bore cannon so there's no rifling in it, so round ball is what you're going to want to use. Now, before I uh, loaded this thing up, I went ahead and put a mark on my um, ramrod there so I could make sure that it is all the way in there because you don't want to have uh, an air gap underneath there. And that is all the way in there. And then we're going to go ahead and put a piece of fuse in it. Now, I already cut one, and this is probably about four or five inches long gives me about 20 seconds to get out of the way so we'll go ahead and get it crammed down in there and you're gonna have to push it into the powder so you're gonna have to twist it around and everything now the original cannons would have had a um, like a primer that went down inside there and had a cord on it that uh, pulled and that would have set the charge off all right and I'm gonna aim for the 50 yard uh, target 50 yards away steel target chances of me hitting it are pretty slim there are no sights on this thing so we're gonna get what we get. Once I get it lined up, we'll get it lit and get everything moved back. Okay, so I didn't hear anything go tang. Uh, not exactly sure where it hit. I do have another, another camera set up so maybe we can see it in the replay. Hopefully we can see some dirt impact or something. But like I said, with no sights on it, it's kind of hard to um, know exactly where you're pointed at. Anyways, let's get everything off the range, get it back in the studio, and we'll take a closer look at it. And this is it. This is the Traditions 69 caliber 
uh, cannon, Napoleon III cannon, and it's a pretty nice looking replica. It is a smooth bore, so there's no rifling in it, so you're going to get what you get pretty much, a little tumbling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there are a lot of smooth bores that shoot pretty accurate. This one is a 14 inch barrel on it. Weighs about somewhere around 11 pounds, I think it is, so it's got a little bit of heft to it. Um, and it's just another black powder firearm is all it is. It's just this one, you don't hold it in your hands, you don't shoulder it. You set it on the ground and let it do its thing. I uh, got 11 inch wheels on it. Uh, I'm not sure what the wood species in is on here, but I've got a crack in the main frame on here. And I've had this thing for a couple of years, so I, I'm thinking that it's probably a lack of humidity what causes it to crack. Um, and like I said, the brushes that are on here, these things are no good for cleaning. And that's one of the reasons why right there, the end of it pulled right off. And that's because I did use this when I first got it, run it down the barrel, I pulled it back and the brush stayed in there. So had a little trouble getting it out, but I did get it. Um, so I would suggest if you get one of these, don't use these. These are for looks only. Um, nice little carriage on it and everything too. It's a uh, pretty decent wood on it. The wheels are pretty decent and everything. Got a little stainless band around them. This is a, uh, it is a steel barrel, but it's, um, nickel plated or chrome plated. Uh, they do make it in a gold plated one too. I think the traditional, I mean, you could say it was brass or whatever, like the bronze cannons of back in the day, but I kind of like the nickel finish on it anyways. Uh, this is some kind of anchor wheel chalk type thing and I did use it. Of course, I'm not sure what good it does, but um, it's a pretty cool cannon anyways. Let me show you a little bit how this thing comes apart for cleaning because you don't want to put the whole thing in the bathtub or the sink or whatever. It is pretty easy to get uh, a part to get cleaned up. Oh, and by the way, I would like to thank CNC Sutlery for getting me hooked up with this uh, get up here, the uh, Union Artillery Soldier with the red stripes on it and stuff. And I'd like to thank Mother Nature for helping me look a little more authentic today with the mud and everything all over the boots. Anyways, taking this thing apart, right here on the front of it, on the top where your uh, trunnions come out there, there are some little pins in here and on chains. There are little cotter pins and they pull right out. They're kind of hard to get out. They're very small. Um, but you can pull them out of there. They are a little hard to grab onto, so if you need to, to kind of twist them around, bend them, straighten them out and everything, get them out of there. Then you pull these little pins out right here, and then you can take the trunnion caps off, and they hook from the bottom and then latch over the top there. And then all you gotta do is lift your barrel right out and it's ready to go. You can take this thing, put it in the tub, put some hot soapy water in there and get it cleaned out and everything. And we are going to do that because black powder is corrosive and um, regardless of what you think, whether it's that it's dry powder and holds moisture and causes the corrosion in there or if it's the sulfur burning, I personally think it's the sulfur, burnt sulfur, what causes the problems. But here's the carriage. Like I said, it's a pretty decent looking carriage. You do have your little elevation adjustment here on the back. I don't like the way the barrel sits on there because it's pretty close. I mean, if you've got it run all the way down in there, it gets closer to the uh, the center of the ball at the back of the barrel there, but not a whole lot more. So you've got quite a bit of difference in elevation there that you can adjust it. And I guess it's not too much, but it should be enough to do whatever it is you're doing. And this is a range toy uh, or it's a good desktop display piece if you've got enough room to do it. Um, and if you've seen in some of my much older leather videos, it was sitting in the back there. I've had this thing for quite a while, like I said. Uh, pretty cool little cannon. If you want, they do make a smaller one, a 50 caliber one, um, which is a lot easier to manage. And about, uh, I would say about a little less than half the price of this one. This one's going to run you... I think I paid right at seven for it when I got it, but I think right now they're up around eight, so they're not the cheapest. Um, but like I said, I've had this one for quite a while. Pretty detailed little carriage on it and a pretty good looking little cannon. Maybe one of these days I'll get it out there and do some real accuracy tests with it and uh, see what I can get out of it. Anyways, thanks for watching Small Caliber Arms Review. If you could, reach up here and hit this button to subscribe to my channel and hit this button down here to check out some of my other videos if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.